been using the ASI Air for a couple of years now, and it was probably probably the biggest thing in, uh, out of any kind of equipment that I bought that actually like really accounted for workflow to the point where you know I was able to do a lot of things that I wasn't before. And when uh, he asked me to do this presentation, I just uh, thought it was a good opportunity to really kind of show people that haven't really got a chance to see this thing yet and uh, kind of how to navigate the menus and kind of just get started with this thing and everything that you can do with it. Um, there are a few things that I didn't cover in here, but uh, as far as getting started, I think uh, I did a pretty good job uh, covering everything. But, uh, so yeah, we'll just go ahead and jump into it here. Um, hopefully by the end of the uh, presentation, we'll have a better understanding of what exactly the ASIR is, um, how to use it for electronically assisted astronomy, um, how to get where to plug all your cores in and everything, um, how to use it for planetary memory imaging, and how to basically use your mobile device to completely stack and edit all your pictures. So when I first started, that option wasn't available. You know, I uh, just saw a lot of people ask that. You know, if you could, is there a way to stack new CWO seems to constantly come, come up with new updates for this thing, and it offers a lot that uh, you can find on a computer now. So, so what is the XIR, and why do you want to use one? Um, it's basically a Wi-Fi device that links your mobile device to your telescope and your camera, so you can do uh, completely wireless imaging from inside the one house. <laughs> Which really good to learn how to so, uh, It offers up a simple way basically to do everything and streamline your workflow basically. Um, no need for a laptop or having to download multiple drivers and stuff like that. Um, offers older wine assistance, uh, automated uh, reading flips, auto guiding as well as many other uh, features. It's compact and lightweight, which is really good for like this thing and not have to lug around on your computer and all that. You can actually use it as a USB hub too. You can connect like a uh, few meters and stuff like that. So you can know, have like one quarter run off your scope. Um, and it's a pretty user-friendly software. Um, you can actually do mosaic planning with it. Um, like I said, planetary imaging, uh, you know, multi-star guiding now. Um, uh, past few updates. Um, I think it's been actually uh, about a year now it's had only star guiding, but uh, at one point it did. So, so it looks in the box, you can basically do the device with uh, different different uh, length cords, and that's basically uh, the plug in like to a CWO camera and then run like a building on it. That's what I used to find for. Um, it does come with the USB 3.0 for attaching your camera to the thing. Uh, it does source so you do have to buy it separately but uh, I always thought they should have included that but they all did. Um, and another thing my presentation was done based off the ASI Pro because it's basically the same device um, but I just haven't like seen any upgrade because it the plus offers a few different things which we'll get into that but basically pick up a used pro a little cheaper than plus and have basically all the same features. Uh, so when you get the thing you will have to download the ASI app on, a, on your phone or your device and basically go into your, your uh, Wi-Fi settings and you connect to the ASI Air. Mine says plus there, but that's just because I have a lot of Wi-Fi standards.
extremely forward uh, if you don't know your main guide scope, but we like to put this here there. And once you actually get on that thing and take a picture, it figures out your uh, But your guide scope. Same thing. 
would stay at like one hour, one and a half hour minute, and, you know, and come down to like half an hour minute. But it kind of just, uh, now it just stays kind of where I did. Really love it, that's nice. You can auto store calibration after each session, and so you don't have to recalibrate some amounts. Whichever one's highlighted is the drop that you're 
right. So if we go back here, you know, on the home screen, over here, we have our histogram. We we'll turn that off. We have access to our histogram down here. So when you take a picture, you can actually do like a auto stretch here to see your data a little better. So Instead of wasting that time, I found that you can actually upload dark files 
cloud stack to to kind of process that a little bit. If you want to. We go to the auto run feature here, and we click on that. It brings up this little bar here and a menu over here. We can click on either one, either here or here. It will bring us into this menu here, and we have our target name up here. Uh, choose to do uh, rating flip or not. Based on your target up here, it will show the same what the grade and how much time you have left to grade and fill. And if we click the plus button here, it's it will open up this box here. And go inside that box, you can choose basically your exposure, your name, how many you want. Uh, and you can add multiple plans too. So if you wanted to do like Orion Nebula, you can Two minute exposures, and then after you, you're done with that, you can add, you can add another plan to do like 10 second exposures. So, and then go inside, you never have to check it again, and just do those, and then do the 10 second exposures afterwards. And you can add multiple plans, you can add up to those things you want to really here. Uh, and then once you uh, have your plan set, you just come back out here.
it doesn't rotate your camera, just the field of view, so you can see how many degrees you rotated and then adjust on your telescope. To, it's really helpful.